everybody and a very warm welcome back to the latest episode of Hidden Jewels of Soul and Disco. I do hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. In this week's episode, we are featuring a girl group who laid the groundwork for all future girl groups to appear on the music scene. Today we discuss the Shirelles. Why the Shirelles are considered the role model for all the girl groups who came after them, and why in 1963 their world was turned upside down, well, we'll discuss this after some needle drops. were founded in 1957 when these girls teamed up for a talent show at their school and the girls were Shirley Owens, Doris Corley, Eddie Mickey Harris and Beverly Lee and especially for that talent show the girls also wrote a song which was called I Met Him on Sunday. Everybody around them were like wow these girls are great. They have great harmonizing, they do a great doo-wop style. There should really come something big out of them. And the same thought was also having Mary Jane Greenberg. And she said, well girls, you know, my mother, Florence Greenberg, has a record label and it's called Tiara Records. And I'm pretty sure you should meet with her. You'd sound amazing. And for over a year, the group hesitated in really becoming professionals and putting themselves out there. But after a year, they met with Florence. And Florence put them under their wings as a manager and also releasing their music. In the late 50s, Tiara Records kind of sold the contract to the Shirelles, to Decker, to release I Met Him on Sunday on Decker. Unfortunately, that single didn't do much and the contract got back to Tiara Records. Also, at the same time, Florence was founding a new label, Skepta Records, and she took the girls with her. And she also teamed the girls up with a well-known and fantastic songwriter and his name was Luther Dixon and he worked with the likes of Pat Bone, Nat King Cole, just to name a few. And the Shirelles and Dixon created what would become evergreens. For example, Tonight's the Night and Will You Love Me Tomorrow. Will You Love Me Tomorrow is, as far as my research went, the first number one hit by a girl group ever. Not, and I'm even considering they're an African-American girl group. So first girl group, probably first girl group ever who had a number one hit on Billboard charts. So they were doing a lot of touring and also they were releasing some great, great singles, which also inspired the Beatles. The Beatles also covered songs on the P.S. I Love You album. So you can imagine what a great influence this group had also for future generations to come. But there was a change happening. Dixon left Skepta Records and so the songwriting material wasn't in the same quality or shape they kind of used to. But I think they could have handled that. But something pretty bad for the girls happened in 1963. Remember when I said in the beginning that this was the year when the world was turned upside down? Well, Florence, still being the management and doing all the business stuff around them, told the girls when they signed with her, you know what, I'm taking care of all the financial things. You girls concentrate 
on the music and on your careers and I take care of the rest. So she told the girls that she put up a trust where all the royalties from their songwriting, the money from their performances, everything was put into. And when they were 21, they could get the money from the trust. The girls had to learn the hard way that this trust didn't exist. There was no money. And this must have been a bitter, bitter pill. So you worked for years and thought that financially all your work, you, the money you get has been secured and suddenly you find out that it hasn't been. So at that moment, the Shirelles decided to leave the label and sue. On the other side, well, Mrs. Greenberg or the label Skepta decided, well, we sue them as well for breaching the contract because they're still on a contract and they need to come in the studio, they need to do live appearances and everything like this. So what they did is they settled out of court in around 1965, but I'm pretty sure that it's not as much money they got as they should have. Also what happened during the time was the British invasion. There were coming up the Supremes, Martha and the Vandals, the Crystals. There were so many groups, girl groups at that time, who were all in one way or another inspired by the Shirelles, which they hardly could keep up with. Motown was the hit machine and the Shirelles, well, their best writer left a couple of years ago and another big thing was that they were trapped in their contract till 1966. So when they were finally released in 1966, the musical world had changed. They had a minor hit at that time, but the momentum of the group was gone. And Skepta, well, they, they cashed in on some greatest hits records. And also during that time, there were some lineup changes as well. So what happened next was that they went to RCA Records and in 1971 they released The Happy and in Love by the Shirelles and you've heard some snippets in the beginning, it's from this album. It's very affordable to get and it sounds amazing. What a fantastic group. The last album the Shirelles released unfortunately was in 1972 also on RCA and was, so, was simply called The Shirelles. Also an album I absolutely do recommend. In 1973, The Shirelles were featured in the rock and roll documentary Let the Good Times Roll, which also features Little Richard. I put the link to this documentary, which I highly, highly recommend, down in the description below. You'll find it on YouTube. It's free of charge. Maybe there will be some commercial breaks, but you can watch the whole thing with this link. Later on, the importance of the Shirelle was very well acknowledged. So in the Rolling Stone magazine, they were stated as one of the best girl groups ever. They were on their list. They got many, many awards. They got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So they are very widely known for what they contributed for the music history and that's the way i want to end that video to keep it on that note that the shirelles have been remembered as the groundbreakers for girl groups and how wonderfully how great they sang i wished for them and i'm pretty sure they wished as well that their careers might have been different but in these times when you were in high school you couldn't afford a lawyer or anybody to you could trust who's not squeezing every cent out of you and making money with you and once you squeeze out squeezed out throw, throw it away so i can only recommend and i think that's the, the greatest legacy and the greatest thing we as fans can do is getting their music and enjoy them so thanks for watching for this week's episode with the Cherelles and I'll see you next time.